We'd like to be consistent from week to week. So we started five minutes ago and we're starting again. I had to turn on the microphone. You see how I pointed at him? See, we started um, the last beginning of this. By the way, welcome. It's so nice Hi. that you're here uh, whenever you're joining us. But we started talking about how can we make this a, a, a message about severe discipline and how that can bring joy to the world. And then um, Brian told me that wasn't a good way to do this. No. <laughs> you were talking about how how people are not necessarily watching this on Sunday morning. And you said that what else better could they be doing on a Sunday morning? Well, I think that's still true. I, I still, I mean, well, even the person who has to work, like, as you said, some, uh, you guys didn't hear that, but people who are have to work, people who are uh, taking care of kids or whatever, and just aren't in a position to watch it. But I'm sure they would agree that but that would be given, better if given they could the do option, that. If yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, right. In an ideal situation. In an ideal situation, right. which this world is certainly not right now. Oh, my gracious. Dumpster fire. Remember that, Vanessa, Vanessa Brookhouse? The world is a dumpster fire right yeah. now. Yeah. It's like, what else is, is oh, 2020 going to have? I, I just don't want you to ever, I, if, folks, don't ever say what, what else could go wrong. Because <laughs> the last time I said that, there was a guitar over here, and it's not there anymore. Yeah. And that's not even that big a deal. We'll just be very careful with that. So, yeah. Dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. Yeah. Dumpster fire. So, anyway, you're going to talk about, about something, hopefully, that is better than what I have oh, been speaking Oh, man, of. the stuff I have talked about today is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. It has to do with both the future and how amazing that is with some really just incredible stuff for right now. Some things about God and about Jesus' heart toward you and me in the moment right now. It's just, you know, it's the end of John 17 and it's a crescendo. It's, there are some statements that are made in there that I just had to just kind of just sit and go, wow. So um, I hope you can hear it. And, and I, I'm going to pray for me and I'm going to pray for you and us to get it this week. So yeah, I'm just excited about hearing uh, talking well, about it. Well, uh, your enthusiasm is infectious. At first I thought, is this hyperbole? No. But he's been talking about this for a while today, and I think he actually means it, mm -hmm. and I think that you'll receive that as well. Let me pray for you. Thank you. Father, thank you for today, and um, the, the, the deep privilege I have of working with, with Joe and with Jesse and all the people who have put, put this thing on, and um, it's just such an honor. And I, I pray for, for them that you would bless them. And I pray for the blessing on, on the people who, who watch that Jesus, it is such a privilege to be able to tell them about your love for them, about your grace and your glory. And I pray, Lord, that you would open their eyes to hear it. They would hear it in the songs. They would hear it in the message. They would hear it right there where, whenever they hear this, where, when, wherever they hear this. Um, that they would, they, would, they would hear these incredible truths. God, you have been so misunderstood by the world. Um, oh, Father, help us to hear your voice. Jesus, help us to hear your heart. Um, Spirit, help us. Now help us to worship wherever we are and, and give you the praise and honor that you're due um, because of your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you wouldn't mind helping with that. I certainly can. All right, uh, let's get into worship. Uh, I'm going to tell you just a very brief story. You've heard enough from me already today, but I was out mowing my lawn two days ago and thinking very specifically about worship. I was listening to worship music, which I haven't done a lot in the last couple of years for various reasons, but um, I found myself worshiping with abandon while I was mowing the lawn uh, to the point where I found myself, you know, not, you know, on the verge of, of weeping, um, just thinking about what it means to be his child, what it means to just let go of all this garbage that we carry. So I, I just want to encourage you today to the extent that you feel comfortable doing so that you just take another step forward, leaning into worship and letting go a little bit. And I'm going to try to do the same thing in this venue um, because this is definitely different. It, and I've said this so many times, it's just not the same without you guys here. I will do my best uh, so that we can connect in worship uh, at this time, whenever you're watching this and whenever you're worshiping with me. Um, last couple of weeks, uh, I have introduced new songs. I'm actually going to introduce another new song this week called Bigger Than, and I think you'll, you're really going to appreciate it. 
it's easy to learn. I, le I learned it yesterday. And um, I think it's one of those songs that you're just going to want to sing. Uh, the, the chorus, I'll go ahead and sing for you. You are bigger than all my fears, God of love, God my love. You are bigger than all my dreams, God my hope, God my peace. Whatever will come my way through each day, I will say, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. So pretty simple, just wonderful words, especially, you're bigger than all my fears. All these things that are weighing me down, all these things that leave me anxious and disconnected from, from him. So let's go ahead and start the song. You are able to provide You are faithful in perfect time Your goodness overwhelms I am held Through the fire You're my shield Your protection never fails no power can separate, I am safe. You are bigger than all my fears, God of love, God my love. You are bigger than all my dreams, God my hope, God my peace. Whatever will come my way through each day, I will say, God, I love, trust you. I trust you. You're the treasure I desire. I surrender my whole life for your glory, my great reward. I am yours, use me, Lord. You are bigger than all my fears, God of love, God my love. You are bigger than all my dreams, God my hope, God my peace. Whatever will come my way through each day, I will say, God, I trust you. I trust you. You are the God who always sees us, even in bare and desperate seasons, no matter what the circumstance. You are the rock on which I stand. You are the God who always sees us, even in bare and desperate seasons, no matter what the circumstance. You are the rock on which I stand. You are bigger than all my fears, God of love, God my love. You are bigger than all my dreams, God my hope, God my peace. Whatever will come my way through each day, I will say, God, I trust you. I trust you. Amen. God, I do trust you. <clears throat> Even though I can't see you, um, even though I tangibly, uh, you're not in front of my face, but I, I trust you and I sense that you are around. Um, and uh, we're going to do a song that I introduced last week, Heaven is Where You Are, um, because he is around us. He is uh, in everything, and, and yet we can still cry out to him and say, we, we just want your kingdom here with us. You had every right to stand there at a distance But you wrapped yourself in flesh and ran to me why would I need proof of your existence 
When your mercy is the air I breathe When your mercy is the air I breathe I know you're not far away God, you cannot be contained Heaven is, heaven is where you are Jesus, I call on your name You can do anything anything heaven is heaven is where you are heaven is heaven is where you are I can relate to the thief who hung beside you and received a gift that he could never earn wonderful grace you can make it all new let your kingdom come in all the earth let your kingdom come in all the earth i know you're not far away god you cannot be contained heaven is heaven is where you are Jesus, I call on your name. You can do anything, anything. Heaven is, heaven is where you are. Heaven is, heaven is where you are. Right here, right now, you're moving, you're moving. Right here, right now, you're moving. You're moving right here, right now. You're moving, you're moving right here, right now. You're moving, you're moving. I know you're not far away, God. You cannot be contained. Heaven is, heaven is where you are. Jesus, I call on your name. You can do anything, anything. Heaven is, heaven is where you are. Heaven is, heaven is where you are. As I was warming up with this song, I just kept coming back to let your kingdom come in all the earth. Right here, right now, let your kingdom come and all the earth. We just cry out to him and say, Lord, in the midst of all of this mess, that we would feel your presence even more. And that we would stop and pause and listen for him and not just expect him to come beating on our door, but to just be present to hear him. All right. Let's continue with worship this morning. For I spoke a word you were singing over me You have been so, so good to me For I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, Reckless love of God When I 
was your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so, so kind to me. Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found Leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Let's do that one more time. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I love the idea of that song that he chases after us chases after us, that he loves us so much that just throws other things aside and, and brings his children home, that we would love other people with that kind of abandon, that we would not seek out artificial worldly barriers to put uh, to, to, to stop God's love from reaching other people or our love from reaching other people something I pray about it's so much these days. I hope you're praying for it too. I'm going from one song about love directly into another song about love, how he loves, just the nature of God's love. Uh, and I, I remember the first time I brought this song to Brian, it must have been 10 years ago, the idea that he is jealous for me, the idea that jealousy is not envy, but jealousy, that we are his, and that when we are pulled someplace else, that he is jealous for our attention, our love, going to other places. And I wonder if he is jealous for you and the way you are existing in this world today. And, you know, for me, is he jealous for, for the things, these worldly things that I find, for that silly guitar, for, you know, some, the fact that I can't get a loan to clean up my backyard. I mean, just little things like that that feel major but they're pulling my attention away from him. So what are you experiencing right now? It might feel big, it might be minor, that are tilting you off axis. Let's, uh, let's continue to worship and think about how he longs for us to be closer to him.
He is jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me Oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind And mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware Of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize Just how beautiful You are and how Great your affections are for me Oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Pastor Brian comes in. Father, thank you for loving us so much that you would be jealous for us, jealous for our attention, jealous for our love, that you so long to be close to us that you recognize that we are being pulled away and you just reckless love, you chase us down, that you want us to be with you. 
Lord, that we would feel that longing, that we would be encouraged by that longing in the way that when we realize that we are loved by somebody unconditionally for no other reason, that we just, it infuses our life with joy and good, and may that be infectious in this world. Lord, we love you. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Mm-hmm. Lower that. I'm here. Um, I am, I'm really excited to communicate this to you today. And I'm really excited about hearing this. You know, every single week I, I try to communicate very carefully and clearly to you what, what the scripture says. And of course, this week is no different. And, um, you know, as I'm going through it, it just, you know, it, all the pieces fell, fell into place. You know, I'm parsing the verbs, I'm doing the sentence structure, and I'm doing all that sort of stuff. And it just like, like there, was, there, there was a couple of things that were said that I just had to just, and even today, as I'm looking through my notes, I'm just like, I just I have to just stop and just think about what it is that it's being, that's being said. And it's so simple and um, so, uh, thank you, Joe, for praying for me, but, but um, I want to pray for us and for me that we can hear this and I can communicate it. So, Father, um, I want to pray that, that right now that, that um, you would open our eyes to hear um, uh, your, your, your word, that people would understand it, that people would hear it, and that they would give, be given power in their, in their inner person to, to grasp what your scripture said about your heart, about your longings for, for us, for, for how you feel about the, us, Father, how you feel about us, Jesus, what you've done for us. And Jesus, I pray that you would help me to communicate clearly and, and, and not just in terms of articulation, but I mean what it means, the, 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 this beautiful, incredible prayer uh, is saying. If there's anything that I've prepared to say that's not from you, help me to not say it or at least not to be remembered. And so that people, Jesus, they need to hear from you in this, this time where there is so much that's not clear of what's true and what's not, and there's so much that's up in the air. Oh, Father, help us to have a clean, clear place to stand. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So John 17, we're finishing up the, 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 the series here in John, John 17. You know, I just, it's just amazing. It's, it, for, for many commentators, they've, they've talked about how that this is, this is such a holy chapter because we're hearing the, Jesus himself speak his last words. He's, it's the longest prayer of Christ. And it's been so rich but now as we look in these last few verses, 24, 25, 26, actually we're going to do a tiny bit of verse 23 in there. It just, it continues. And just how amazing it is. And I think, I think what I'm doing is I'm just going to walk through as, it, as we talk, as we hear his longing for you. What, what does Jesus really at the end, what is his heartbeat? Now we've talked about his, pat, his, his priority of the glory of God. We've talked about, you know, who he's praying for and his, his worldview. But, but here is just the beat of the Father's heart and the beat of Jesus. And, and the first thing I want to read is, let's just read in verse 24. Father, I desire that they may also whom you've given me, be where I'm at. Who is the they? Um, he's talking about believers. I mean, to put, it, to, be, to put it simple. He's talking about the people in verse 20 that I do not ask for these only, but also those who would believe through him. So he's thinking about all the believers of all time. And not just the, uh, the, the, the 12 men here. He's thinking about all of them. You and me and all across the, the world, all through the ages. This is who he's talking about. It's the people in verse 25 and 26, and you don't have to flip to it, Jesse. Um, it's those who know him. It's the people who, who know the Father through the work of the Son, whose eyes have been opened 
to, to see the glory of God, who, who appreciate who Jesus is. I think about first, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, where there's, Paul is describing um, how, how the God of this world, the evil one, has blinded the minds of people. But, but Jesus has, has, has opened our eyes that we might see it. We might see the, see the, the glory of God. And, and that's, that's, that's in that 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. You can see how, how Jesus has opened it up. It says here, in their case, the God of this world, the unbelievers, have blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing what? The light of the gospel, of the glory of of Christ, who is the image of God. For we claim ourselves um, that Jesus Christ is Lord, with ourselves as your servants for our sake. Why? Because God, who said, let their light be shine in the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. It's, it's this idea that, that God has illuminated these people, and we can see similar language here in John 17, this, this idea that God has made these people be able to see the glory of God in Jesus. They know him. And one of the things that absolutely stunned me about these people that he's talking about is, is the very last line in verse 23. That the world may know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Do you, do you hear what that says? Do you, do you get it? That That the Father loves you and me just as much as he loves Jesus. Jesus is looking out through the, through the ages. He's looking through all these people who believe in him. And he's saying, by the way, these people that, that the Father gave him. You can see that in verse 24. And he's saying, those people... The Father loves them with the same intensity, the same magnitude as Jesus is loved. See, it's fine to say, okay, God loves me. But do you realize he loves you as much as he loves Jesus? I just, I, I'm speechless when I start to think about what that means. This is why I pick things like the song, Oh, How He Loves, is because, oh my God, you love me this much? It's, it's, it's just, I, I don't even know what to, how, what to, how to comprehend the fact, you know, that the God of the universe, the, my creator, thinks of me the same degree of love as he does Jesus. In spite of my sin. It's not that he doesn't know I sin. And you know, I mean, I mean that, that's part of the, the, the response in my heart was, yeah, but I, but I sin, right? But your sin isn't a problem. And, I'm not, and hold on to that, that, that issue because I'm going to come back to it in a moment as we get down to the how is this all possible. Um, but your sin isn't, isn't going to stop him from loving you. He loves you with your sin. I mean, that's the John 3, 16. That God for, so, for, for, so loved the world that he gave his only son. While you were still sinners, for Romans 5, 8, Christ died for you. So, so your sin isn't, isn't the issue on whether or not God loves you. He loves you with your sin this much. As much as he loves Jesus. And so we move on to verse 24. These are the people he's asking for. Father, I want those, these people whom you love as much as me, these people that you've given to me, these people who believe in me, not just these 12, but he's thinking all those believers, I want them, and here's the second thing that just stuns me, to be with me where I'm at. 
first of all, this, 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 this word, I, I want, you know, in this version, it's, it says, I want. Other version, I desire. It's, it's this idea of deeply longing for something. Jesus wants something. He wants you to be with him. I think, I think about of a, a child asking a parent, you know, a, a, a child who, who maybe doesn't ask for very much very often, you know, a child who, who is the apple of his father's eye, who absolutely adores this child, and, the, and, and he goes to his dad and says, Dad, you know, I really would like something. Are you, is he going to say no? No. Not this, not this son whom he says in Matthew 4, excuse me, Matthew 3, that this is my beloved son in whom I am very pleased in. This is that son who's saying, Dad, I want something. And what I want is I want those people, I want them here with me. Where is here? Verse 5 tells us where he is. He's going to be in the presence of God, you know. No, not verse 25. Verse 5. I'll read it for you. Read it. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence. Jesus is going into the presence of God. In other verses in, that I could pull up, he talks about how he's going to be seated at the right hand of God the Father. That's where he's going to be. And he's saying, Father, I want Brian right there. I want him in hugging distance of me. I don't want him, to, you know, just to be somewhere in heaven like a, a, as a doorkeeper. So often we think, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm just going to slink into heaven and I'm just going to maybe just put a toe in and that'll be good enough. And Jesus says, no, 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 come on. I want you right with me. And where he is is not just anywhere in heaven. He's in the center of it all right next to the Father's throne, and he says, that's where I want you. I want you there. Hear the longing in that. It's not just enough for them to get into heaven. It's not enough. He wants to be right with us. Do you hear the want, the longing for you? And he knows who you are. He's saying, I want, he's, again, he's thinking down through the, line, through the years, and he's thinking of all those things. In this moment right there, 2,000 years ago, Jesus pro could have said, I know Brian's come into faith in 1980, and that person, that, that young man, I want him right here. And he can say that about every single one of you who put your faith in Jesus. He wants him there. It's stunning that the God of the universe wants me. And not just gets me into the door. He wants that kind of a deep relationship. I think about Psalm 1611. You know, I, I quote this verse so often. It says, you make known to me the path of life. Thank you, Jesus. You've opened my eyes to see the glory of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ so that I can see how amazing Jesus is. And so you will fill me with joy in your presence. He wants us with us. And when we're in his presence, there will be joy and eternal pleasures at the Father's right hand seated with Christ Jesus. Our souls will feast in the presence of God. It's just amazing that God wants this. And what will, what will we, we, we see there? Well, going back to verse 24. Father, I want those you've given me to be with me and to see so that you may, they may see my glory. What is the purpose of this? What is the purpose of them being there? It's so that they will see the glory of Jesus. 
the full extent, unshielded, unfiltered, undiluted, full expression of the goodness of Christ Jesus, experiencing him. And that's why it'll be filled, filled with joy. That's why there'll be pleasures every more. Because your soul will feast on this, this incredible deep connection. I can almost hear in my mind uh, the Father and the Son laughing and, and, and celebrating this, this, this deep belly laugh of joy at having all of his children right around him. I mean, many of this, you know, you, you've seen this, having, having a grandparent maybe with, with, the, with all their grandbabies around them and they're having a great time and there's this laughter. This is a hint of what we're talking about and we're going to see and experience the full goodness of God in his presence and it's just... And why? The end of this verse, because... You, Father, have loved me, the Son, Jesus, and you've, you've always loved me. Even before the world was created, there's this eternal love. This is why the Father says yes to this, because the Father loves the Son. And he says, you want them, and I, so I want them too. Yeah. But that also means, by the way, what's the, the foundation for this? The foundation for you getting there is not you. It's the love of the Father for the Son. That's why you get there. Because Jesus wants you there. So the Father wants you there, so he's going to get you there. The foundation of our salvation is the love of God with himself with the Father and the Son. That's why we get there. It's not because we somehow are good enough, we can earn it, because we have no, in any way, shape, or form, deserve it. I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. Still, you gave yourself away so that we can be in the presence of God. It, the Father is saying, Brian, you're going to get there because I love Jesus. For the sake of my son, I want you there. And I love you just as much as I love him. Your salvation doesn't depend ultimately on you and me. It depends on his own love for himself, as we're going to see right now. Verse 25. What is, how, does this, how is this possible that we could have this kind of a future? Verse 25. Oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and those know, and these know that you have sent me. He starts with these, there's so many just hard hitting points here. He starts off with the, O oh, righteous Father. The Father is righteous. He's saying, Father, you are righteous, the world isn't, but you are. Are. What is the basis of it? It's the righteousness of the Father, that he is going to make it right. He's going to get you there because he will do right by you. He's appealing to the righteousness of the Father. So why? Again, it, it, it's built on the character of God and the work of God. Because of the work of the Son is why you're there. They know you. Why? Verse 26. Because I made known to them your name. They know you. And back on 25, I know you. The world don't, I do. This, this reminds me of that John 14, 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one at all comes to the Father unless it's through me. I know you, Father. The world doesn't, but I do. And I made it, you known to them. And he does this. How does he reveal 
the name in verse 26? How does he make, how has he made that known? How has he made that known to you and me? To glorify, to make a name known, to, to reveal something, is to bring glory to him. And, and there's one thing, of all the things that Jesus did, that explains and expresses the, 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 the name, the character of God more than any other single thing, and it's this. It's what he asked for in verse 1 of this entire prayer. Father, glorify your name through the glorification of the Son, that is, through the cross. Why do you get there? Because, of the, because Jesus has died for your sin. This is why I, went, I said at the beginning, why is your sin not an issue? Because Jesus has taken care of it. Stop trying to earn a love you already have. It's taken care of. I remember years ago when I was struggling so much with my own sin and struggling with, I just can't seem to be as godly as I want to be and as, as pure as I want to be. And I just, I could hear his voice finally say, Brian, do you not understand that I can just simply say the word and you will no longer struggle with any sin ever again? The Bible says that's the case. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 John 3 says that in the moment that Jesus comes back, we will all who are still alive here will instantaneously be transformed and never again have sin again ever again. If he can do that then, he can do that right now. So if God wanted to in this very moment say, Brian, you will never struggle with sin ever again, he could do that. His sin, my sin, is not a problem for God in in terms of a relationship. That doesn't mean he doesn't work with me on it. It doesn't mean he's not working on, 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 on cultivating this desire, this longing to be pure and holy. Absolutely. We do need to repent of our sin. Yes, we need to, to strive to be like Jesus. But don't let that, don't let make that think that he doesn't love you. Rest in the full, completed work of Jesus. So that you can do what? It's the last part of verse 26. See, there's this link here between knowing and the beholding and loving. I have made them known, these people who are going to see him and be in his presence, and I'm going to continue to do that so that what? So that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. That's a weird way of saying this. If you... The people who know him are going to behold him. And those who behold him are going to do what? They're going to love him. And love him how? The love, just as the Father loves the Son, so we will love the Son. And just as the Son loves the Father, we will love the Father. See, one day, you're going to be in the direct presence of God. And you will love Jesus just as much as the Father loves Jesus. And you will love the Father. You will love the Father that way, and you will love the Son just as the Father... Okay. You'll love the Son the way the Father loves, and you will love the Son... You get it. Because of this, this, this interconnection of love. The, the, the Father gave the Son a people to be saved. Jesus died for them so that they would be with him. To see his glory, these people that he loves, so that they're going to love the Father and the Son just as the Father and the Son love each other. You're gonna, one day you're going to be in that direct presence. And you will know that you are loved just as much as the Father loves the Son. And you will love him return as you're beholding the glory of God. And this is what Jesus longs for. Now we're going to sing one more song and I have, I have a prayer application that I want us to have as we kind of finish this off. Father, I pray that you would help us to hear your voice in this, to, to dispense with these these. these these notions of that we're not lovable and that we're not loved or we're not wanted. Um, 
but to see your heart for us, Father, for us, that you gave us to the Son to be saved, that Jesus, that you love us, that you made us known, and you're going to continue to do this, and that you want us with you, you're, we're, that we're a wanted people. In Jesus' name, amen. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. Lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who strayed. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary. A rest that endures Earth has no sorrow but Heaven can cure So lay down your burdens Lay down your shame All who are broken Lift up your face Oh wanderer too far so lay down your hurt lay down your heart come as you are come as you are fall in his arms come as you are there's joy for the morning O oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broke. up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far, so lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. you are come as you are come as you are oh. yeah um comments um 
just just the thing that sticks with me, and, and you've said this many times before, and like a song that we love and we need to hear again and again to really get the grasp of it, um, your sin is not a problem for him. It's not an insurmountable barrier for him. It doesn't mean that we embrace sin. We, we do accept that we are flawed, that there's that we should not, if it's not a barrier for him, it should not, we should not allow that to be a barrier between, that separates us from him. Right. Yeah. That, that just always resonates yeah. with me. It's like, I hope you get it, that it's, it's that fa the father saw you and he said, I want you, I want these people to be with me. I want them. I love them. I love them like I love you, Jesus. And so he gives them to the son and says, son, I need you to do whatever it takes so that they can be in our presence, so they can experience our glory, so they can experience, can they be right with us for an eternity? Can you take care of that? And he goes, yeah, that's what he's, I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the cross so that all of that's taken care of. And it's done. Enjoy your relationship with God. That's what he means by, in, in that Matthew 7, 11, 28, 29, come to me all who are weary. I'll give you rest. Rest in his grace. And so here's, here's, here's the application for us. And it comes out of Ephesians chapter 3, where Paul is saying, He's praying. He says, he says what I want to pray. And he, and he says, may you have the power. I pray that they have the power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Pray that for yourself. Father, help me to know the, the height. Give me the power to grasp your love because he has love for you. And everything that, that could get in the way of that, Jesus has taken care of. So just run to him. And I know that there may be somebody who's, who's listening to this today who are, who's not a believer. And I want you to know if God is calling you, if he's moving in your heart, that maybe I, 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 I do believe in him. Jesus will never turn away anyone who comes to him. That's a sign that he wants you. So come. Just come. Come as you are. And so we're going to do communion now. And, um, you know, and, and communion is, is something to be experienced, not just wa uh, watched. You know, because salvation is an experience when we get to heaven we're going to be experiencing christ we're going to experience the graciousness the goodness the glory of god and so as you eat this today i want you to remember that this is something you're taking in you want him in you and this is something that you're going to experience one day and so on the night that jesus was betrayed he took the bread and he says this is my body given for you take and eat and so he ate so Hey, mm. and eat, enjoy the bless blessings that God has provided for you, the righteousness. In the same way after, cup where he's, after supper, he took the cup and he says, this is the cup of the new covenant. Pour it out for the forgiveness of sins. This is the new agreement that by his grace, his blood, his death on the cross for you, it, you're clean, you're holy, you're righteous. Not because you've earned it. Heaven knows. You know that you've sinned today. Yeah, even today, probably even the middle of this, this service. So have I. We all do. But his blood has washed it away. So whenever you take and drink, remember that this is, this covers all of those sins so that you can just enjoy the presence of God. Amen. Let me pray for you and then uh, we'll be done for the day. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for Joe and Jesse and 
for the people who've come, and I pray you'd give them blessing. Open their eyes to see how much you value them, how much you long for them, how much you love them, how pleased you are with them as a good father is, as a good um, older brother is, as, and you, 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 you've stored up for us such an incredible future so that whatever is happening in this life, in this world, in our nation, in our country, in our family, in our lives, that, you know, lift up our eyes that we might see the hope, the glorious future you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next time, peace. Have a good week.